Hello everyone, this is Chris and Herzog. And Little Girl. And Cephas Jr. And today we're reviewing Us, a uh, 2019 film. A family's serene beach vacation turns into chaos when the doppelgangers appear to begin to terrorize them. Directed by Jordan Peele. Written by Jordan Peele. Here's the cast. Lupita Nyong as Adelaide Wilson and Red. Winston Duke as Gabe Wilson and Abraham. Elizabeth Moss as Kitty Tyler and Dahlia. Tim Heidecker as Josh Tyler slash Tex. And Shadia Wright Joseph as Zora Wilson and Umbra. And Evan Alex as Jason Wilson slash Pluto. All right, little crew and uh, Cephas Jr. Um, Cephas, you're joining us today to talk about this movie, Us, because uh, you're quite irritated by it. And there's a couple articles that we've read um, that has me kind of irritated as well. But we're not going to let that... We'll talk about that after the review. But the movie, Us, basically is an all-black horror film with a couple white actors in it. But it's rare to find a horror film that basically the majority of the cast is black. It's about a black family that goes on vacation back in 86. The daughter wanders off through a rainstorm down the beach and goes into this house of mirrors, right? And you see her identical twin that she looks at and then the camera cuts away, right? So you don't know any more about what happened. or, or And then it goes to the scene to where... She's not speaking. You know, the family's talking yeah. at the table and she's there sitting. And still, unless you really read the articles about this film, you're probably going to know more. But we went into this film just watching it because I don't read anything. And, of course, um, Cephas Jr. over here did some research about the film. And he brought it to our attention during the watching of this film. And then, of course, him being a guest today, we're going to talk about what he was talking about and some of the um, irritated comments that he's made. So, basically you have, again, a black family going on vacation, and then all of a sudden, the doppelgangers, which is basically your opposite, your twin, yeah. that they want to kill you. Um, this, uh, this movie was confusing at most parts, but uh, here's a clip that will tell you what most of the movie's about. They look exactly like us. They think like us. They know where we are. We need to move and keep moving. Don't stop until they kill us and we kill them. So, started watching this. Now, I was kind of shocked after uh, Cephas Jr. made a comment about, he said after us, he's not going to ever have a white actor as a lead in his film. But then there was a white, a couple white actors that's basically not, I guess, partially the leads or friends of, of, of the family. What's cool about this film, I thought, now your mother hates this film, <laughs> but you have the two girls, the two boys, the mother and the father, basically, you know, fighting each other. You know, one wants to kill the other, however. It's kind of confusing at first because you start, there's a twist in this film which we're going to talk about. Cephas Jr., um, the, you've seen this movie. What are some of the things that you find irritating or cool or what? Well, normally in a slasher film you have a motive. A killer normally has a motive, a very clear motive, whether it be from the beginning or in the middle of the story. And this one throughout the entirety of the story, even at the ending, doesn't make it doesn't give the killer a clear motive. And it's, it's the complexity of that makes it difficult for people to understand just sitting down and watching it. And you have to do a little bit of research afterward to understand it more. Yeah, that's exactly what, what you guys did. You guys actually went in there after the movie and watched it. And then we got some clarity of, we can say it. Basically what the story is trying to say, or isn't it trying to say, is the little girl that you see on the IMDb page on the trailer, um, the mother of the, the husband and wife that go on vacation apparently she is the girl that switched with the actual daughter correct is that yeah, how it is yeah, in the hall of mirrors so red basically is the actual daughter and um adelaide adelaide's basically the other the the, the evil the part. Yeah. right 
So the doppelganger switched places with her, and that's why she couldn't talk at first. And then because Red was able to talk, if you remember what happened, I guess the girl hit her in the throat, whatever, oh, messed up her okay. voice cords or something. So when she's talking, it sounds creepy. <laughs> But in reality, it's from the injury as being little. So because they switched, <laughs> she couldn't talk. But my question is, why is she talking good now? And never went in detail. Yeah. See, I'm confused by that. Mm-hmm. If you are a doppelganger or you're like a non-existent, otherworldly, underground person, how can you just switch places? How can you just switch places? How can you switch places and have a normal life when the actual person who is the real person is now underground but because she can talk I guess she became a leader or something is that how it was yeah because she has the like the vocal ability she's able to organize an uprising of the doppelgangers which I think is why that in, the, the entirety of that actually happened but uh, it also but it didn't it didn't clarify exactly where they live uh, it in, implied in the beginning that there's a bunch of underground subway. sewers and, yeah, yeah. and subways, abandoned subways and stuff, stuff like that. Underground. But it never went in detail. Yeah, it was, it implied it. And that's that's the rough part about this movie is most of the critical plot points, the climax, and even origin stories are all implied. It's, it's not exactly directly coming out and telling you what happened. Even the ending is implied. Everything about this movie is it's impl- implicable. And it's difficult to understand. Now... <clears throat> Little Gru is just sitting here laughing because I spilled my coffee everywhere, but you fucking idiot. Yeah, coffee dick. So what do you, I mean, you're not saying very much, but, um... I don't know, I just find this whole movie confusing to me because, like, <clears throat> if it, if, if I had to go and look up, um, what the conclusion of the whole movie was, then I kind of find it that that was a kind of waste of my time because... I don't feel as though I should be going in as a viewer. I shouldn't be going in and looking up what type, what was the whole meaning of the ending of the movie, because like, I guess we can, I guess we can. Uh, you can say anything. Too much what? of a. The movie's a, been out for how yeah. long now? But um, <clears throat> uh, Adelaide turns to her s- son and gives him a sm- uh, like a smile. Okay, that's and the then, end. Yeah, and her son looks at her like he knows what the whole point, what the what sh- her plan was. So that gives me. And that makes me think is um, is her son and the opposite version of her son switch places too. Yeah. Now Pluto, that's yeah, the yeah, actual Pluto. son. He was so fucking creepy because he walked in like a dog, had a mask on. They treated him like a dog. And it was it was a, that's one of the cool scenes of the movie I mm-hmm. think because you know, and then he you know the other kid. Uh, Jason pulls his mask up and then he yeah, did, yeah. you see burns on his face. Now that never went in detail how the burns got in his face either. Well, again, it's another one of those implicable things where it says uh, he's a pyromaniac so he's naturally attracted. So it might imply that maybe he got that injury from fire, but again, it's never directly s- come yeah, out and said that. I, I mean, just, it doesn't have to, but still. I just right. find this whole movie a waste of time if you have to go and look up the meaning of the ending if you, ha- if you were a viewer. Now, by saying that, does that reflect on your grade of the film because of that? I mean, just most of the parts are kind well, of... Well, no, crazy. no. But you, it was, you're it was a, the backpedal. I'm it, was a, it was a great movie overall, but just like, I don't feel as though I should be, as a viewer, I should be going and looking up what the meaning of the movie was. Okay, well, I wouldn't use the word great because it's not a great movie. I mean, it's a good movie, but not a great I mean, movie. but it, the plot line was pretty good. Yeah, it was. It was, but, you know, to me, it was entertaining. I mean, you had the two guys, the opposites fighting. The fight scenes the were boats. pretty awesome, yeah. And then you had the two girls, the two white girls. Remember those two? Oh, and yeah. The two doppelgangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. twins. Yeah. So they're all bragging about, well, I killed that person. However, the film was entertaining, but, you know, it's... But, like, I find I found out the whole meaning of the story. There was, like, a Jeremiah... I think it was Jeremiah's 11-11. Jeremiah 11-11. Therefore, thus said the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape, and though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. So basically, it was just saying that um, the people will rebel, and they won't, <clears throat> and they'll be evil, and they won't, uh, they won't give forgiveness. So he's one of these guys that that's trying to be like an Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. A, um, you know, trying to make a, a psychology horror thriller or whatever, trying to make 
the person who's watching this film, they would have to go into a textbook to understand what the hell he's trying to say. And he's trying to make himself uh, better than what he actually is. I mean, I'm not saying he's a bad director. I'm just saying, I mean, the film was cool, but let's not try to make a... We don't have to be Einsteins and try and watch a film like uh, yeah. uh, Cephas Jr. just said. What do you give it? I give it a 6 out of 10. I give it a 6 as well. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, it mostly really only played out to some of its horror aspects, and the narrative in general was difficult to understand, as well as the director making it seem much more complex than the actual story needed to be. So I wouldn't even give it a maybe even a five, five. at most. All right. Now let's get into it. You made a comment, which we have the article right here. And it's kind of funny. I haven't heard a single thing about this until you brought it to my attention. If Trump would have said this, although he is the president and this guy's a pretend filmmaker or whatever... Jordan Peele and making movies. After the movie Us, I don't see myself casting a white dude as the lead. Yeah, see, that's a double standard. This prerequisite to the actual film's trailer dropping, barely anyone really made a comment on it besides a lot of extremists, and even then it wasn't actually plausible arguments. And I had mentioned to you, like, before the film, and that's when we really started picking out some of the stereotypes that he kind of put here and there in the film about minorities and things of the sort, which oh, yeah, like, really bring it down. Like like the Adelaide goes she goes, Who the Adelaide goes to Red, she goes, Who are you? And Ad, uh, Red goes, I'm American. Yeah, but like she makes it seem so dr- over dramatic and kind of melodramatic as well that it, it, it makes it like downplay people who love to be American. And then even then when they're talking to the white uh, couple, uh the white woman is like I got all kinds of uh, face work done and hair work done and things of the sort and it's like it's really a when the entirety of the the beach scene when they're meeting with the white couple and they're talking and stuff it's it, it just makes it seem as though like he really really wanted to put an emphasis on white people and even in one of the scenes where uh, he puts a the husband left a key underneath the rock as a spare key and uh, Red, oh, yeah. Red picks it up and he says something like that and then the wife goes uh uh, white people shit or something like that. That's okay. a white guy move. Yeah, or a white person move or yeah. something like that. And it's like, mm. come on. Like, if you're going to make a film, and you're going to make a good film, at least leave politics out of it, and at least try to draw your narrative towards your writing and your emphasis on the story instead of complacently nitpicking at random races for whatever they are. Especially even the opening scene where there's like two or three black bunnies on the cage of the wall. And there's like all, all white, white, bunnies. white bunnies. It's still trying to downplay us in some in some manner of speaking. Now I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying that makes the film worse. I'm just saying that if, if you're gonna litter it with pol- like politics, then do it somewhere else. This isn't the movies aren't meant to be politically downplaying. They're meant to be something we can consume and watch freely and love it. Like cult classics, things of the sort mainly don't have politics in them, and this this is just ridiculous. Now, this is from The Hollywood Reporter, and this is what they wrote. Hot off the record-breaking success of his latest mind-minded horror flick, the writer-director advises Hollywood improv students on ego, marijuana use, and why minority actors will always star in his film. That is his prerogative. Fine. That's his prerogative. I just want to know who did a line of coke before they actually like wrote that, because they think that this is a, like some sort of record-breaking film when it got mediocre reviews, and, and it's, it's it's just mediocre in and of itself. Yes, and his comments would it, it hurt his film because I never heard of this film until I seen it the other day. You know, I never was this in the theaters. It yes. was, yeah. The, the, the whole reason why the, the film actually... I, mean, I never seen a trailer in the... It had popularities when the trailer dropped, and then he released like that, that statement about yeah. he's not going to... I First, I heard it. I, I thought uh, he said that he wasn't going to hire any more white actors until I read into it more and said that he wasn't going to hire any more white leads. All right, folks. There you go. All right, everybody. This is Gruesome Herzog. And Little Girl. And Cephas Jr. And we're out. Woo! Woo! <laughs>